In the 1950s, the casting process for TV series like Lawman was a meticulous process. For Lawman, which first aired in 1958, the producers aimed to assemble a talented cast that could bring the story to life. John Russell, who played the lead role of Marshal Dan Troop, was a natural fit. With his experience in westerns and his commanding presence, he was chosen to embody the strong and determined Marshal. Russell's audition showcased his ability to portray the character's complexities, and he quickly became the cornerstone of the series. Peter Brown, who played Deputy Johnny McKay, was a relatively new face in Hollywood. After several auditions, the producers saw his potential and believed he could bring a fresh energy to the show. Brown's chemistry with Russell was evident during their screen tests, and the producers knew they had found the perfect partner for the Marshal. The role of Lily Merrill, the local saloon owner, was given to Peggy Castle. Castle had already made a name for herself in film noir and was looking to transition into television. Her audition demonstrated her ability to portray a strong and independent woman, which was a departure from the typical love interests of the time. The supporting cast was rounded out with experienced character actors such as Alan Baxter, who played the town's newspaper editor, and Robert Wilk, who played a variety of villains throughout the series. During the casting process, the producers looked for chemistry between the actors as well as their individual talents. They held screen tests and read-throughs to ensure that the cast could work well together and bring out the best in each other. These pivotal moments helped define the casting of Lawman and set the stage for a successful series. He's just going to find Dick a hundred dollars. He does every time. So there it is. Take it and get out. The 1958 TV series Lawman was directed by Lewis R. Foster, who brought his unique vision and style to the show. Foster's approach to storytelling was characterized by his attention to detail and his ability to create tense and dramatic scenes. He was known for his meticulous preparation and his ability to elicit strong performances from his cast. Foster's creative influences included classic Western films and the work of directors like John Ford and Howard Hawks. He was particularly interested in exploring the complexities of the human condition within the context of the American West. This is reflected in Lawman, which centers on the character of Marshal Dan Troop, played by John Russell, and his efforts to maintain law and order in the fictional town of Laramie. In terms of style, Foster favored a straightforward and unadorned approach to filmmaking. He believed in letting the story and the characters speak for themselves without relying on flashy camera techniques or special effects. This approach is evident in Lawman, which features long takes and simple yet effective compositions. Foster worked closely with the cast and crew of Lawman to bring his vision to life. He was known for his collaborative approach and his ability to create a positive and productive working environment. He worked closely with the show's writers to develop the characters and storylines and he was always open to input and suggestions from the actors and crew members. One of the key elements of Foster's directorial vision was his ability to elicit strong performances from his cast. He worked closely with the actors to help them understand their characters and to find the emotional truth in their performances. This is evident in the performance of John Russell as Marshal Dan Troop, which is both nuanced and powerful. In conclusion, the directorial vision behind Lawman was characterized by Lewis R. Foster's unique approach to storytelling, his attention to detail, and his ability to elicit strong performances from his cast. His creative influences, straightforward style, and collaborative approach helped to bring the story to life in a way that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on the Western genre. We want to do this nice and legal life with no trouble. Lawman is a 1958 TV series that follows the story of Marshal Dan Troop and his deputy, Johnny McKay, as they maintain law and order in Laramie, Wyoming. My favorite role in this series is Dan Troop, played by John Russell, who portrays a strong and wise leader. Did you know that the show was based on a true story? Marshal Troop was inspired by a real-life lawman named George W. Baylor. There are many more fascinating facts and anecdotes about this TV series that will make you laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear. As you watch this video, you'll learn about the show's unique production challenges, the cast's real-life friendships, and some surprising behind-the-scenes moments. What about you? 
Do you have a most cherished memory or personal experience related to Lawman? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, stay tuned and keep watching to discover the many funny, shocking, and sad facts about Lawman. You too, Eccles. Lola, you want the doctor call. The 1958 TV series Lawman was filmed in a variety of settings to create a realistic depiction of what he in 70s Laramie, Wyoming. The production team faced numerous logistical challenges, including finding suitable locations and creating realistic set designs. To achieve this, they combined both studio sets and exterior locations. Studio sets were built at Warner Brothers Studios in Burbank, California, where they meticulously recreated the interiors of the Marshall's office, saloons, and hotels. The team paid close attention to detail, ensuring that every prop, from wanted posters to period furniture, was historically accurate. Exterior scenes were shot at several locations, including the Iverson Movie Ranch in Chatsworth, California, which provided vast open spaces and unique rock formations to double as the Laramie landscape. The production team also utilized the nearby Bell Ranch in Santa Susana, California, for its expansive vistas and cattle herds. One innovative technique employed during the production of Lawman was the use of the then new Eastman color process. This color film stock provided more vibrant and lifelike colors than previous film stocks, enhancing the overall visual impact of the series. However, filming in these locations presented its own set of challenges. Transporting cast, crew, and equipment to remote locations was time consuming and expensive. Additionally, weather conditions often disrupted shooting schedules, requiring the production team to be flexible and adaptable. Despite these challenges, the production team of Lawman managed to create a compelling and authentic depiction of the Old West. Their attention to detail in set design, innovative use of technology, and ability to overcome logistical challenges contributed to the series' enduring popularity. Oh, huh? My mind's made up, Huggles. That's the way it's gonna be. All right. The 1958 TV series Lawman, with its 92 episodes, is a hidden gem that deserves more recognition. Unfortunately, it's not yet available in remastered form, and the existing copies are often of poor quality. The show's writers, including Richard Matheson, went on to become notable authors, which speaks volumes about the quality of the series. Lawman is a well-written, well-staged, and well-produced show that offers engaging stories and characters. Despite not being as well-known as some other series from the same era, it has a loyal fan base that appreciates its unique turn. The show's setting and characters are compelling, and the writing is top-notch. The actors deliver solid performances, making the audience invested in the storylines and the fates of the characters. While some of the references and terms used in the series may be unfamiliar to those who haven't seen it, the overall experience is still enjoyable and worthwhile. The show's themes and messages are timeless, and the stories are still relevant today. In summary, Lawman is an excellent TV series that deserves a wider audience. While it may not have the same level of recognition as some other shows from the same era, it is still a well-crafted and engaging show that is worth checking out. Here's hoping that it will be remastered and made available to a wider audience in the future. creation of a film score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of storytelling and the 1958 TV series Lawman is no exception. The music in Lawman complements the narrative and emotional tone of the show, enhancing the viewer's experience. The composers and musicians involved in creating the music for Lawman worked diligently to ensure that each note and chord aligned with the show's theme and mood. The score features a blend of western and dramatic elements, capturing the essence of the show's setting and storyline. According to the composers, they aimed to create music that would heighten the tension and drama in each scene, as well as provide a sense of place and time. The use of traditional western instruments, such as the guitar and harmonica, helps to establish the show's setting in the American frontier. Meanwhile, the dramatic elements of the score add depth and complexity to the characters and their emotions. The soundtrack features a mix of instrumental and vocal pieces, all of which contribute to the overall atmosphere of the show. 
The musicians drew inspiration from a variety of sources, including traditional Western music, classical music, and contemporary film scores. One of the most memorable pieces from the Lawman soundtrack is the theme song, which sets the tone for the entire series. The composers wanted the theme to be instantly recognizable and evocative of the show's themes of law and order, as well as the ruggedness of the American West. Overall, the music in Lawman is an essential component of the show's success, providing a rich and nuanced backdrop to the narrative and emotional tone. The composers and musicians involved in its creation have made a significant contribution to the enduring popularity of this classic TV series. It won't be long, Dick. You'll be happy for it. Don't drink up all of us here. <laughs> in the first season of Lawman, the main characters Dan Troop and Johnny McKay faced numerous dangerous situations. Dan was injured six times and shot twice, while Johnny was injured four times but never shot. Dan's more notable injuries included being mauled by a bear and hit by a tree used as a wagon jack. Dan also shot and injured seven people and shot and killed 24, while Johnny shot and injured three people and shot and killed 12. In one episode, they shot and killed five people together. Unlike other Warner Brothers westerns of the time, Lawman did not have any crossover stars from other shows. The character Oni O'Reilly, played by Joel Grey, was portrayed as being younger than Johnny McKay, but in reality, Grey was three and a half years older than Peter Brown, who played McKay. These details add an interesting layer to the show and its production. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1958 TV series Lawman is from the episode titled The Tax Collector. In this scene, Marshal Dan Troop, played by John Russell, confronts a man named Horace Greeley, who has refused to pay his taxes. The tension between the two characters is palpable, and the scene is a masterclass in acting, direction, and cinematography. The scene is set in Greeley's small general store. The camera work is tight and focused, with close-ups of the actors' faces to emphasize their emotions. The lighting is dim, which adds to the sense of foreboding. As Troop enters the store, the camera pans to show Greeley's nervous expression. Russell's performance in this scene is exceptional. He delivers his lines with a quiet intensity that commands attention. His facial expressions and body language convey Troop's frustration and determination to uphold the law. When Greeley refuses to pay, Troop's anger is evident, but he maintains his composure, never raising his voice or losing control. The director, Lewis Allen, expertly builds the tension in this scene. He uses pauses effectively, allowing the silence to speak for itself. The pacing is deliberate, with each action and reaction carefully planned and executed. The result is a scene that is both suspenseful and emotionally charged. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. It is a powerful reminder of the importance of upholding the law, even in the face of resistance. It also showcases Russell's acting prowess and the high production values of Lawman. Unfortunately, there are no direct commentaries from the filmmakers or actors regarding this specific scene. However, Russell was known for his meticulous preparation and commitment to his roles. In an interview, he once said, I always tried to find the truth in every character I played. I wanted to make them real and believable. His performance in this scene is a testament to that commitment. Overall, the tax collector scene from Lawman is a standout example of quality television from the 1950s. Its impact is still felt today, with the scene often cited as one of the best in the series. The combination of strong performances, skilled direction, and effective cinematography make it a truly iconic moment in TV history. Coach, if I'm not back by 10 tonight, you come looking for me. Now you're talking sense. Adam West, known for his role as Batman, appeared as Doc Holliday in Lawman and other shows. The series also inspired the creation of 11 comic books from 1958 to 1962. In later seasons, Warner Brothers reduced the violence, opting to wound villains instead of killing them. The 1958 TV series Lawman, starring John Russell as Marshal Dan Troop, had a significant cultural and social impact. 
The show resonated with audiences due to its compelling storylines and strong lead character. It was one of the first TV shows to depict a marshal with a tough, no-nonsense attitude, which was a departure from the more gentle lawman typically portrayed in westerns. Lawman also influenced pop culture, particularly the western genre. Its gritty realism and complex characters set a new standard for TV westerns, inspiring future shows like Gunsmoke and Bonanza. The show's theme music, composed by Bernard Herrmann, became iconic and is still recognized today. Moreover, Lawman contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The show explored issues of law and order, justice, and the role of authority figures in society. It also showcased the challenges of frontier life and the importance of community in overcoming adversity. Overall, Lawman left a lasting impact on television and popular culture, paving the way for future westerns and influencing how law enforcement officers were portrayed in media. Why not? He's nice. He knows how to treat a lady. The main cast of the 1958 TV series Lawman includes John Russell, Peter Brown, and Peggy Castle. Sadly, all three of them have passed away, with Peter Brown being the last to die in 2016. Interestingly, John Russell had the opportunity to act out the same story on two different shows. In Cheyenne, he played a retired gunfighter, while in Lawman, he played the hero trying to talk the gunfighter out of a shootout. In season two of Lawman, both Dan and Johnny faced numerous injuries and shootings. Dan was injured a total of three times and shot four times, while Johnny was injured six times and shot three times. Dan shot and injured two people and shot and killed 22, while Johnny shot and injured one person and shot and killed 10. Dan's more unusual injuries include stepping in a wolf trap and being bitten by a child. In one episode, Dan and Johnny shot and killed four people, which was the most in a single episode in season two. On. Man had to pick out which side he wanted to shoot at him or burn his barn, unless he wanted both sides taking a crack at him. The 1958 TV series Lawman received mixed reviews from critics when it first aired. Some praised its gritty portrayal of life in the Old West and John Russell's strong performance as Marshall Dan Troop. However, others criticized it for its violent content and formulaic storylines. Audience reactions were generally positive, with viewers appreciating the show's action-packed episodes and straightforward moral lessons. Lawman was a solid hit in the Nielsen ratings, consistently ranking in the top 30 shows during its four-year run. The series received one Emmy nomination for Outstanding Cinematography for a series in 1960. While it didn't win, the nomination recognized the show's high production values and visual style. These accolades are significant for those involved in Lawman, as they demonstrate the show's impact and enduring popularity. The nomination for cinematography, in particular, highlights the show's technical achievements and visual appeal. Overall, while Lawman may not be remembered as one of the most critically acclaimed TV series of its time, it was a successful and influential show that left a lasting mark on the Western genre. Emery Parnell, a prolific American character actor, was known for his rugged appearance and versatile roles. He often played hardy, jovial types or mystified police officers, and sometimes appeared as prison wardens, heavy fathers, or villains. Parnell had regular spots in Universal's Ma and Pa Kettle series and on the Western series Lawman, where he portrayed the bartender at the Birdcage Saloon. John Russell, who was only 37 when cast in Lawman, believed that his character, Dan Troop, needed to appear more mature and experienced. To achieve this, Russell had the makeup department streak gray through his hair and lowered his voice when speaking. Dan Sheridan, who played Jake the bartender, was only mentioned once by his full name, Jake Summers. These character details added depth and authenticity to the series, enhancing the viewing experience for audiences. Sellers stays locked up. I'm not turning my back or closing my eyes. I'm a... Law During the filming of Lawman, the 1958 TV series, the crew faced many challenges. One time, a severe sandstorm hit the set in California, causing production to come to a Halley tent at the cast and crew had to wait for the storm to pass, which took several hours. When they returned to the set, they found it covered in a thick layer of sand. It took them the rest of the day to clean up 
and prepare for filming again. Johnny Cash, a guest star in one of the episodes, was known for his love of music. During breaks in filming, he would often take out his guitar and start playing. The cast and crew would gather around him and he would play some of his hit songs. These impromptu concerts became a highlight of the production and helped to boost morale. The show star, John Russell, was known for his tough exterior, but he had a soft spot for animals. During the filming of one episode, a horse was supposed to fall during a chase scene. However, the horse refused to perform the stunt. Russell spent hours with the horse, calming it down and gaining its trust. Eventually, the horse was able to perform the stunt and Russell was able to complete the scene. During the filming of another episode, a real-life lawman was on set as a consultant. He was a retired sheriff who had worked in the area where the show was being filmed. He shared his experiences and knowledge with the cast and crew, giving them a better understanding of the life of a lawman. The show's creators used some of his stories as inspiration for future episodes. Overall, the making of Lawman was filled with challenges, but the cast and crew were able to overcome them with hard work, dedication, and a little bit of help from their friends. A ravine. Well, let's get it on. There's no hurry. Peter Brown, the last surviving main cast member of Lawman, passed away in 2016. His co-stars, John Russell and Peggy Castle, had previously passed away in 1991 and 1973, respectively. Lawman, set in Laramie, Wyoming, accurately depicted the cooler climates of the state through its character's regular wear of heavy coats. This was in contrast to other series set in Wyoming, such as The Virginian and Laramie, which more frequently depicted warm weather. Johnny, a main character in Lawman, lost his parents at a young age and was raised by two family friends he called uncles. Uncle Jess was portrayed by Edgar Buchanan, and Uncle Joe was portrayed by Frank Ferguson. But it hurt any more than we do. But I need your help. You want... The 1958 TV series Lawman holds a significant place in film history as a pioneering Western show. It showcased the daily life of a small town marshal, which was a fresh perspective compared to the classic Westerns of the time. The series' emphasis on law and order over gunfights and adventure was influential, leading to a wave of similar shows in the following years. Lawman was groundbreaking in its realistic portrayal of the Old West, focusing on the challenges and moral dilemmas faced by Marshal Dan Troop, played by John Russell. This character-driven approach inspired future filmmakers to create more complex and nuanced westerns such as Deadwood and Longmire. The series also had a profound impact on the representation of law enforcement on television. It set a precedent for the modern police procedural, with its focus on investigation and problem solving rather than violence. This influence can be seen in shows like Law and & Order and CSI, which have become staples of television programming. Lawman has also inspired several subsequent works, including the 1971 film Lawman starring Burt Lancaster and the 1960s TV series The Virginian. The show's enduring popularity and influence are a testament to its quality and significance in the world of television. In the TV series Lawman from 1958, the same sound effect was used whenever someone fell to the ground, regardless of the cause. To attract more female viewers in the second season, producers had Peter Brown leave his shirt unbuttoned. In the third season, both main characters, Dan and Johnny, sustained injuries and shot various people. Dan was injured a total of five times and shot four times, while Johnny was injured five times but not shot. Dan killed 22 people in both seasons two and three, while Johnny's kills were reduced from 10 to five. Those shot and injured by Dan remained consistent at two per season, while Johnny's shot and wounded numbers increased from one to three. Despite attempts to tone down the violence, the number of people shot and killed remained high. Kind of strange you don't remember more. John Russell, the star of Lawman, based his character, Dan Troop, on a real life officer he had known during his service in the US Marines. In the early 1960s, when westerns were at the height of their popularity on television, an American magazine held a contest for the fastest gun in Hollywood. 
Peter Brown, who played Johnny McKay and Lawman, won the competition, beating out other cowboy stars. At the start of the show's second season, Peggy Castle joined the cast as Lily Merrill, the owner of a saloon. Over the final three seasons, her relationship with Dan Troop mirrored that of Marshall Matt Dillon and Miss Kitty Russell in Gunsmoke. I'm a lawman, I know. People here gotta get one thing straight. In the fourth season of Lawman, both Dan Troop and Johnny McKay faced injuries, with Dan being shot three times and injured 11 people, while Johnny was injured seven times without being shot. They shot and killed a total of 28 people together. Dan's most unusual injury was falling into a hole, and they killed the most people in one episode, a cold one, where Lily also killed someone. At the start of the series, a pet cat was present in their office, but it disappeared during the first season, and its absence was never addressed. Dan had an older brother named Clay, portrayed by James Drury, but further details about him are not provided in the facts given. That's right, you've got a choice. Make the wrong one now, and you'll never be able to live with yourself. During the run of Lawman, which aired from 1958 to 1962, the series occasionally used recycled scripts from other shows. These scripts were credited to W. Hermanos, a Spanish translation of the name Warner Brothers. The main character, Johnny, had a tumultuous relationship with his job as a deputy. He resigned three times throughout the series. The first time was due to his belief that his biological father might have been an outlaw. The second resignation occurred when Johnny thought his superior, Dant, was attempting to take credit for a kill that he had made. Lastly, Johnny quit after he shot a childhood friend and felt he lacked the necessary fortitude to continue being a lawman. I'm glad you brung me some food. If it was up to them, they'd let me starve to death. <laughs> In the 1958 TV series Lawman, a tragic event occurred that left a lasting impact on the production. Actor John Russell, who played the lead role of Marshal Dan Troop, suffered a personal loss when his younger brother died by suicide during the filming of the show's first season. This shocking incident added an unintended layer of emotion and depth to Russell's portrayal of the no-nonsense lawman, as he grappled with his own grief while bringing the character to life. The series continued to explore themes of justice, morality, and the complexities of the human condition, with Russell's nuanced performance serving as a poignant reminder of the real-life struggles that can inform and enrich an actor's work. You're not laughing? If you have memories and experiences related to the 1958 TV series Lawman, we'd love to hear from you. Share your stories and let us know how this classic show impacted you personally or influenced your view of cinema. Your engagement through likes, shares, and subscriptions helps us continue our exploration of the cinematic universe. We're particularly interested in how Lawman may have shaped your appreciation for television westerns or your understanding of storytelling in the genre. By sharing your thoughts, you can contribute to a broader conversation about the enduring appeal of classic TV shows and their influence on contemporary media. So, whether you're a longtime fan of Lawman or someone discovering it for the first time, we welcome your insights and perspectives. Let's engage in a lively discussion about this iconic series and its place in the annals of television history. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Your support helps us continue to create content that resonates with fans of classic TV and cinema. There might have been something on the early stage. You wasting your time.